Hey everybody, this is Dave from AskUncleDave.com and today I'm going to show you how to get tvOS 9.2. That's the latest uh, Apple TV uh, release that has the, f the way to build folders, connect the Bluetooth keyboard, um, it has some support for other languages with Siri, and it's got the podcast app, and, as f and also the app switcher. Uh, you could switch between apps, it looks different this time around. So in order to get this, uh, you have to be a developer, and I by no means have a developer's account, a paid developer's account. I have a guest developer account. And if I go on to Apple's page here, and I even want to look at the release notes, uh, being that I'm signed in, it'll tell you, sorry, you can't view this page. Also, if I try to download the 9.2 beta, it'll tell me, sorry, you can't view this page. So the best way to do this uh, is to get it from the web. So basically if you search tvOS 9.2 beta uh, you'll get a whole bunch of legit sites that link but if you just copy this build number right here and you do a search you're gonna find other uh, sites whether they're out of the United States or not or something and you basically can uh, click on on something this is a French site or whatever and you can translate uh, with Chrome they have the way to translate the page so basically you could scroll down and you get the Apple TV 4 uh, model A1625 and that's the download right there you just click that and in in uh, 10 seconds flat you're gonna download the uh, IPSW uh, that's the uh, firmware that you can side load or side uh, restore and I'm gonna show you how to do that in a second so I went ahead and downloaded that uh, I'm not gonna give you any direct links uh, but I'm going to, uh, you know, just tell you that you can sideload even without a developer's, developer's account. You can install 9.2 without having to worry about some, um, you know, authorization or, you know, something checked off or whatever. And the other good news is that if you go into my Apple TV, which already has 9.2, uh, I have Cody here. And I showed you in the previous video how to install Kodi and get it over onto your Apple TV by sideloading it. Well, if you still have the IPA that we created, uh, you basically can just go into uh, Xcode and you can just fire up Xcode again and then just go into Windows and, and go to Devices, being that your Apple TV is connected with the uh, US. BC to uh, 2.0 or whatever you have and you can just hit this plus sign right here and I have it on my desktop and this is my Kodi IPA that's my uh, Apple TV app and I just click that and I hit open and it went right over back onto my Apple TV you can also build it from scratch you follow that video I'll have a link in the description uh, how to get Kodi on there and uh, the other thing is uh, so you can't get it legit wise so you're gonna have to just download it from that site now uh, the keyboard that I'm using uh, for this is um, I have the jellycomb backlit uh, keyboard and this is a Bluetooth keyboard I'm, I just got it so I'm still charging it right now but this is a great thin little keyboard uh, that you can uh, buy for a very cheap price it's like 19 bucks uh, it's got a lot of color options. It has a, a it's backlit and everything. And I'm going to do a review on this shortly after this video. Um, and I'm going to show you how to pair it to an Apple TV. So this is sort of going to be like a review of 9.2. And it's going to be um, also how to sideload it. So now we downloaded uh, that IPA. We have our Apple TV hooked up to our uh, iTunes and our computer. And you're going to see that I have the Apple TV uh, IPSW so here it is and all you have to basically do is hit the options key when you're in iTunes and hit restore so you'll do that and then this open in uh, open dialog will open up and you just find uh, you go to your desktop because uh, that's where I put the download and you hit the Apple TV 5.3 not uh, dash 92 so this is the latest 9.2 version. So we click that and we hit open, and then you're going to see your Apple TV, uh, in, you know, wipe out and completely install this 9.2. Now the bad news is that you lose all your settings 
uh, when you configure different apps, you put your username and your all that stuff in. Uh, you know, you signed into Netflix and did all that. You lose all that. But the good news is everybody loses that. Even Apple developers who side, who actually load up legit me, legit wise into your Apple TV, they have to start from scratch as well. There is no backup for the Apple TV. Like, you know, when you take an iPhone and you connect it to iTunes, you can back it up. And then you can go to the latest version and then restore all your settings. You can't do that with an Apple TV. The only way you could do that is if it's over the air. In other words, when an update comes out for Apple TV and you go into settings here and you click settings and then you go into your system, you go in here and you do a software update, you'll get, a, you have the ability to save all your background settings, all your iCloud, uh, not your iCloud, but all your settings that you made for your particular apps and all your sign-ins and things like that. Uh, iCloud, if apps have iCloud uh, backup, if they enable that when they were building the app, you'll be able to just sign into your Apple TV and then some of the things will be restored. Okay, with that said, and with the, uh, with the 9.2 installed on the Apple TV, let's do like a quick review of what 9.2 brings you. So if we go into settings, you'll see that uh, this is the settings panel. We have general and there's not much added here, but they did add some languages uh, for French, Canadian, and uh, Spanish, US, as well as Australian uh, English. So that is brand new. You can uh, take a look at that when you uh, install this, and that's great for those people in, uh, in the US that need that language support. Then your accounts, uh, everything is the same there. Audio and video, there's a couple of little things here that might have changed a little bit, but not much has changed too much in the settings, but you will now see remotes and devices and now you're going to see this option for Bluetooth here. So if you click Bluetooth and we hit the connect button on my uh, new keyboard that I have here, you're going to see that we can scroll down and click here and pair up with a keyboard. Uh, this is a great feature because now we can type in better. So on the screen here, you're going to see 2954 and you can hit enter. This is a great size keyboard. Um, I can't wait to show you all the features that it has. It works with iOS, Android, and Windows as well. So there we are. We're connected now. And with this keyboard, you can scroll up and down, move side to side. You can go back a step, and then you can press and hold it and go back to the home screen. The only thing it doesn't have is Siri, uh, and it has volume control, uh, but it doesn't work too good. But it does have pause and play when you're playing videos. Um, and I'll show you more of that when I do the full review of this. One other thing I did want to show you is that uh, being that most keyboards that you buy that are Bluetooth don't have the Siri and um, and they don't work too good with with uh, the volume control, you can make uh, your own like keyboard holder. Uh, I'm going to show you this in the review how I made this. Uh, you know, then we got to find a way to secure this, maybe some magnetic tape or something like that. But you can bring this onto the couch and you can basically play. And even if you have to use the built-in uh, gyroscope and things like that, you can do that with this, sort of like a steering wheel almost, or you can set it up where you can have the remote sideways for those games that are sideways played, or you could turn it sideways like this, or you can just pop it out and use it. But anyway, I'll show you that in that review. I just wanted to bring that to your attention that I did build something like that. So that is Bluetooth, that is a feature. Now you can see here, I have some folders on uh, my desk, my uh, springboard here, and you could basically have as many apps as you want in a folder. And if you have more than the nine default ones, you could scroll downwards and keep going and looking at all of your apps. You can also change the name of the folder uh, by doing that. And then there's some other options where if you want to create a folder, so if you press and hold this, and just like if you were going to delete it, you press this delete button, but then you have some more options here. You can create a new folder for that app. You can move it to an existing folder, uh, or you can delete, obviously. So that is folders right there. And uh, you can move around your folders as well uh, by just clicking, holding. They go into, oh, I'm sorry. They go into wiggle mode, and then you can move them around wherever you want on the screen. You can also take a app 
and you can bring it over another app and it will create a folder that way then you can change uh, you can click it and then you can go up and change the name and you make folders that way as well now that's uh, folders so now app switcher also if you double click uh, this home button here you'll see that we have the new app switcher and that's just like you know iPhone and uh, iPad and everything and it just has that new look where you can scroll through and see all of your options there uh, what else is new? So we do have an, a podcast app, and this is a full-fledged podcast app. Uh, I subscribe to a lot of CNET channels. Uh, you could see that these are my podcasts here. And then you have feature podcasts, top charts, and then you can also search some podcasts. Now, the good thing is uh, if you find one that you uh, are interested in, you can click it. And basically, when you go inside it, you can do uh, lots of things uh, by you can actually uh, go in and subscribe to them right there uh, with that subscribe button there and it will automatically be added to my podcast uh, podcast this podcast you know if you watch them uh, you have an option also if you come out and you go into settings uh, you could set in settings what you want with your podcast app so if we go into apps here and we go to podcast you could see in podcasts that you can uh, sync your podcast, you can refresh it every day, uh, limit uh, episodes, and then also delete played episodes. And then you could change some color X, uh, you know, to make it look different like that. So uh, that's a nice feature too. So we added podcasts. So I showed you that you can install 9.2 even without a developer's account. I'm sorry, we won't provide the link, uh, but you know, in the uh, search if you searched the 13y5179e I'm sure you'll have no problem finding it um, you've seen the new update and what all the things that it brings you see that you could pair with Bluetooth keyboards now and keep an eye out for this and also watch all my other Apple TV videos uh, I think you'll enjoy all of them I want to wish you a nice night and have a good day tomorrow and I'll see you on the next video. Thank you very much.